hi all, this is your favorite friend Jay or Jaylan Salah, as you formerly know her, a film critic at Geek Vibes Nation and in session film. I had the pleasure of watching Model House, a new thriller that has this campy vibe to it. I got a feeling of, you know, Black Christmas, Death Proof, a lot of fe uh, female-led movies, horror movies and thriller movies. And I'm so excited to talk to Derek Pike, director. Uh, Derek, how are you doing? I'm good, how are you? I'm great. Um, first of all, I really like the movie. And I know this is your feature debut, right? So mm -hmm. what brought into your mind this idea? And why did you feel like you wanted to introduce yourself as a filmmaker with this film? Yeah, I mean, I, you know, I have a, a background, obviously, in music videos and um, in some fashion videos. And, you know, I, when I was kind of setting out to to write my first feature or, you know, and and get a feature made, I figured, you know, why not? Uh, you know, I should probably do something in, in a world that I know that I or at least, um, you know, I have some connections in. And, uh, you know, I, I basically I figured, you know, I, I should utilize the resources that I do have and make a film. You know, I, I didn't know uh, many actors and, uh, you know, but what I did know is I, I knew, um, you know, models with a big with big followings. And I thought, well, Maybe that's going to, um, you know, maybe that'll bring us a wider audience. And, uh, you know, that's basically why I chose to, to go in this direction. This is wonderful. So this cast is an all-female cast, young women, very talented. How do you, as a director, you know, like uh, go through the casting process? Because I felt like every young actress was really well cast in her role so how was the casting process and how did you know which girl to fit in or did you have someone in mind specifically from the beginning yeah so when i when i wrote the film um i already had Haley lawton back who plays trudy and kira santoro who plays nadia i had them in mind i knew they were going to be in the film um they've been friends of mine for years so you know i i i, I knew that they were going to play those roles as i was writing and i, I wrote the roles for them essentially and um you know the the other actors i uh you know i i, I we basically we cast we we probably watched about 100 audition tapes between those three you know and and um it all it all kind of started with me sending out um dms you know instagram dms to to models that i thought could maybe play the role at all or also i thought maybe would act um you know, Natalie Newtonboom, for example. I mean, I had no idea, uh, you know, her, her, I had no idea her experience. I had no idea if she even wanted to act, but I sent her a message and she actually said, oh, I've, I've always wanted to act. I actually did a high school, you know, play, I think it was. And, um, you know, for her, that, that, I thought that was really interesting. And, and Corey, Corey Ann Roberts, who, who, um, plays Zoe, she, really? you know, she also, you know, she she had she didn't have a background in acting, but she was always interested in it. And she just uh, sent an amazing self tape. And, you know, it was for that role. I mean, we had it was down to a few uh, people and we did audition a lot. So, you know, that was pretty amazing. And and Priscilla, uh, Priscilla Huggins, she um, I think I think she was probably the last one that we cast and and she just brought this like special, you know, character to that to that role as well. So, um, you know, I was really excited when when we locked everyone in and, uh, you know, after we locked in the models, we just want to make sure that um, the surrounding cast was very experienced because, you know, the, the all the girls for for the most part were first time actors aside from Haley and Kira. And, um, you know, I just wanted to make sure that there were some veterans on set, you know, that can kind of show them the ropes and, you know, um, and, and they definitely were, you know, they definitely did take them under their wing and, and helped a lot. I think we got great performances out of the girls, not only because they, you know, really went in and, and uh, went hard to make this this film special for themselves and also, you know, as a whole. And they, um, you know, I believe they all got acting coaches and they... They really, you know, did their homework. So when they came to set, I mean, they were very professional and and good to go, ready to go. So did you really want to do your first film as a thriller horror? Like, was this the genre you had in mind or you just had something I got to do about the modeling world that I was invested in and I had a lot to do about? Or did you just blend two genres together? Like, I want to know, why did you 
start with a thriller? And how did this throw back to your background as someone who is well versed in the modeling world or the world of, let's say, feminine beauty and beauty in its most exposed and most, you know, like represent itself? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I, you know, I didn't set out to, I, th I think, um, you know, like I said, I, I wanted to uh, write, uh, you know, I've, I've always write what I know, like, you're not going to see me writing a, a film that takes place in a country I've never been to or anything like that. That's, you know, I, I write what I know. And, and basically, I, um, you know, this, this world, I felt like I knew it in a, in a way. And also, you know, I didn't only I didn't only write this. Of, of course, I have ideas for other scripts, and I've written other scripts, and you know, I'm, I write all the time. But I didn't. Um, it, it's not that I thought, oh, I'm gonna. This is gonna be my first movie. I I, I felt like my first film out the gate has to uh, have an audience. I I need to. You know, I I never worry about film festivals or anything like that. That's not my thing. Um, I, I don't make I don't make films for festivals. I make them for, to entertain people. And, uh, you know, that's what I've done with music videos and everything I've done, you know, uh, visually in my life. It's just to entertain. So I wanted to make something that um, entertain people, find an audience and, you know, hopefully do well. And, and so I can go keep on making more movies. So for me, the movie had some moments where, you know, the characters were in a very vulnerable position. So I know that as actors, this would also be vulnerable and you would self-express and you would be in a very, very sensitive place. How do you, as a director, ensure the safety and a great environment for self-expression and vulnerability for the actors? So that they give their best and at the same time, just, you know, feel safe. Yeah, I think, you know, it's luckily these luckily the you know the models especially they spend a lot of time even though they're not in front of you know film cameras they spend a lot of time in front of photo you know photo cameras and you know I don't know if you're familiar with that world the fashion world but you know a lot of time they're even just taking clothes off changing in front of several people you know so none of them are shy and, and I think that I, I also knew that going into it, that I wouldn't, that's not something I'd have to worry about. You know, it's not like I'm having them take their clothes off in front of everybody, but I just know that if they're willing to do that on a, on a set, a photo shoot, then it, I can throw anything at them and, you know, crying and screaming. And I, I think it all came pretty natural to them because of their background and having, you know, being in these really vulnerable positions uh, beforehand and, you know, in, in, in their day-to-day -day life. But other than that, I mean, I think that, um, you know, what's really important is having a really is having good crew on set. You know, everybody's respectful. Everybody's having a good time because at the end of the day, all we're doing is we're we're making movies and we're lucky enough to to do that. And we should be fortunate enough to do that. So there's there's no I have no time for bad energy or any kind of negative negativity on set, um, you know, and, you know, at the end of the day, we're we're just making a movie. You know, and and uh, everybody should should be happy that they get to do that. So. Okay, so one of the things that I really liked about the movie, and I'm not going to say a lot because I want people to be surprised, but mm -hmm. there were assailants and there were models. And you could tell there is a huge difference between acting, you know, like as an assailant behind the mask, and then you have a model who is always out there. So I don't know. I like the juxtaposition. I like the difference between both. So. Mm -hmm. How do you direct like the actors who are models and who are usually beautiful and out there, and yet you act you direct the actors who are more hidden or have to deliver the performance without showing us how they really look like until further on? So how do you mix that? And how, did you have this mix in mind because you're always in a modeling world and it's very glossy and I'm not gonna say of course a professional, but it's very out there. It's very in our faces. And now with Instagram, I think it's more commercialized and it's more mainstream. Like a lot of girls want to be modeled or can be modeled even. So did you have this difference in mind, this like yin and yang of life? You know, people always in the dark and people who are always out there and how this mismatch works? Yeah, I thought you know it's interesting that you brought that up because I think. You know, I could have gone in the direction where the intruders came in without masks on. You know, a lot of films do that or or at least you can tell what they look like. <clears throat> and with this, it's, you know, we have all these models they are in your face. They look beautiful. And then the intruders come in and we don't even get to see their face, you know, right in the beginning. And I and I like that because I think people I don't, I don't it's, it's kind of funny thinking about it where you're watching this movie and it's all just these beautiful, good looking people. And then 
the next people that come in, you can't even see what they look like. So you're just still focused on the beautiful, good looking people. And then you, you know, you don't, and what I, what I think is actually, you know, um, amazing and, and, you know, shout out to Chris and Scout. They did an amazing job with those masks on and you still felt like emotion. You still felt, um, you still, I don't, their, their energy was just great, even with the masks on. You know, and, and they, of course, would joke that, you know, they're the they're in masks the whole movie and no one gets to see them. But, you know, you, I mean, you obviously do get to see them towards the end of the movie. But, yeah, it's uh, it's you know, it's it's it was it was pretty funny. I, I think I think they gave an amazing performance. And I think, um, you know, they should be proud of what they did with the masks on uh, in particular, in my opinion. I mean, it's. You know, I think it takes a lot to uh, to give a good performance when, you know, you know, you can, you know, people aren't even seeing your facial expressions. It so. is. And for an actor to deliver that without us even seeing, I think it's harder level. And at the same mm -hmm. time, it was it was very cool. Like for me, I'm always looking for actors who are wearing masks because they give you more than you really expect with an acting yeah. so yeah it was it was awesome. Like for me, I liked it that the introducers were actually wearing masks. So could it be for that? Awesome. No, thank you. I okay. enjoyed you like that. Uh, really, really. Yeah. So, okay. What I want to know is um, which was the hardest scene to shoot and which was the most enjoyable scene to shoot? Because there are a lot of actors. I think it's harder to control a larger number of people in front of the camera, I think. Yeah, I think, you know, probably one of the hardest scenes um, to shoot. Well, to one of the 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 scene that takes place um right in the beginning of the film and in, in the waterfall scene uh that was difficult to shoot mainly because we didn't have much time we were basically shooting with a small light window you know it was a full we, it was a full day out there but we probably only had about two to three hours to shoot and um and it's just because of the lighting you know that uh, like we wanted this film to look beautiful you know with our characters are beautiful we wanted the film to look beautiful. So, you know, we weren't going to just shoot in harsh light all, all day and, you know, see what we get. Um, we, we specifically wanted to shoot at a certain hour. Uh, and, you know, that was difficult getting all, you know, getting those scenes done in that, in that small time frame, being on a beach outside. Um, I also make a cameo in that scene. So, you know, I was also in front of the camera and then running to check out behind it. And then, the another difficult scene would have been, you know, it's towards the end of the film when all the characters and, you know, this is in the trailer, you could see the girls are all tied up um, and, you know, the intruders are there and we have guns, different things are happening. And I think that that scene, we have almost everybody in the film in it. And, uh, you know, that without giving anything away, I don't know if you remember, but yeah, that to me, that was also a difficult um, scene because you know, we had everybody in the shots, we had everybody in the shot, but also, you know, we, that, that house, um, you know, by the, by the time we shot that we've shot basically throughout the whole house already. And I don't, I didn't want the house to ever feel stale and I never wanted, um, scenes to look like they've been replicated or shot one at, right after the other, because the, 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 the cameras are in the same place. So, you know, even though maybe we shot a few different scenes in the living room, you'll never see it from the same perspective. And, you know, even, you know, I never wanted to ever go back to like, oh, I saw that shot before in a previous scene, even though we're in the same location, you, you know, everything to me to keep it fresh. I wanted all different um, perspectives and angles in, in each scene. Which is really awesome. I love the film. I love everything about it. Performances were great. It kept me on the edge of my seat. I want to know what you're up to next. Like, are you planning something, or are you just going with the hype for the film? Yeah, no. Let's you know, I I uh, let's see how the film does. You know, I'm I'm really excited about it. I've I've always wanted to. You know, when I first wrote this film, and uh, you know, I've always had the idea that uh, it it would be sort of like a franchise, and uh, you know, I have opportunities to do that if this one does well. So. You know, it, it's it's kind of um, like that's exciting to me. The the fact that you know maybe there could be another model house, all new models, new house, new location. Um, you know, maybe not even a house, maybe an apartment in a in a city or a big hotel room. Who knows? You know, and uh, that to me that that's exciting. If that if something like that could uh could happen, but also yeah, I'm I'm writing as well, and I'm I'm just finishing up a romantic comedy that 
hopefully I'll be able to shoot uh, this summer. But, you know, I, uh, I love thrillers and I always love, you know, action and, and um, that kind of thing. So, you know, we'll see, we'll see what's next. Definitely. Um, thank you, Dirk. Like, this was awesome. You know, Model House is opening in selectors and digital on demand April 5 from Shout Studios. Amazing film. Really exciting. You're going to love it. And it also gets a little bit of commentary on our Instagram media obsessed world. So I can't wait for people to watch it. Thank you, Dirk, so much. I enjoyed right, this. Thank you. Thanks for your time. Appreciate it. Thank you.